everyone. I hope you're doing well and had a lovely weekend. Help with West Ham winning. Chelsea dropping points against Sheffield United. Brighton getting smashed as well. So results kind of went for West Ham on the weekend, bar that Newcastle one. Anyway, back by popular demand is Frankie. Frankie, how are you doing? Yeah, very well, mate. Thank you. Very well. How are you feeling? Before we get on to the David Moyes stuff and whatnot, how are you feeling about the result at the weekend? Mate, it's just a good result. Just a good result, um, really, with what was round the corner. Um, I had, if I'm honest, half of an eye on Thursday night. I'm very, very excited for it, mate. Um, it's what we, as football fans, dream of, isn't it? Big European nights against a, a big German side. I mean, what more could you want? So all I was really interested, mate, was the result. And um, normally I would be a bit critical of how the result came around. But this time it wasn't about that for me. It was come through. The only thing I would say, mate, is it was I was about to say come through unscathed. But unfortunately, we're still not 100% on Boeing yet. So um, as long as he's all right, mate, then um, I'm more than happy with what went on and uh, roll on to Thursday. The, the news regarding Jared Bowen is that he's got a bruised hip and we're unsure whether or not he's going to be available for Thursday or not. So there's an... Uh, a nervous wait for the fitness of Jared Bowen ahead of Thursday's game. Um, let's just rewind a little bit before the game, Frankie. And that's what I want to discuss because I was up in Scotland when this happened and the sort of news broke that David Moyes was set to quit West Ham at the end of the season. Gonzo nicked the videos. A few people messaged me and I was like, wow, this is massive news. Now, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be about the bush here. I think it's been blown out of proportion. So I, before I did this video with Frankie, because obviously it was in Scotland and football came around, I just watched the football over the weekend, all the football, and then today I was like, right, back to work and do this podcast. So I thought, I, I want to discuss the Moy stuff because I've been away. I want to discuss it, quite a big topic. So this morning I was sort of doing research. I say research, I Googled it. I Googled David Moy set to quit and nothing was coming up. And then I was like, okay, right, who's the journalist? Okay, we've got um, Henry Winter, we've got Charlie... Um, and we've also got Jason Burt, so big, some big journalists. I thought, right, let me check. David Moyes set to quit Jason Burt. And then I found this clip on Sky Sports YouTube, which I've sent to Frankie prior to this podcast. And I watched it. And I have to say, I was almost disappointed, I guess, because it feels like there's literally nothing changed since prior to the belief that Moyes was set to quit. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense, mate. Yep. What was your take on it? Mate, listening to it, I would say it's as confirmed, it's as factual as the other point that Charlie Wyatt made, that West Ham might win the Europa League and get in the Champions League. I would say they're both pretty much on par with each other. And um, yeah, certainly there's nothing... Um, you know, set in stone there at all. I just think, like you say, it's just a bit of fan opinion, mate. No difference to what me and you could turn around now and say, what do we think the score is going to be on, on Thursday night, mate? So, uh, yeah, it was a... Uh, an interesting one because like you say it, it created so much buzz didn't it it created so much noise um but really it was just two people having a chat yeah two journalists for those who don't know they were on sky sports you can i'll put a link to the youtube video in the description below it's three and a half minutes it's not long at all it's a small segment of a bigger show where they're discussing the headlines and they get they sort of talk about david moise's future at west ham and charlie begins by saying i think he's going to walk away and it would be madness because they could win the Europa League and qualify for Champions League. And then Jason sort of gets asked, well, you're nodding. Do you agree? He said, yeah. But what gave it away for me, the fact that these two know nothing. And by the way, they're not claiming to know anything. They're journalists there giving opinions on football. They're not really being asked, what do you know? And like Frankie said, it's no different to me or Frankie sitting here guessing what's going to happen. Because I think that's all they're doing. They're just making predictions based off of information they may get from other people. Which is exactly what everybody does, isn't it? They just they're just in a different circle. They just speak to other journalists and we just speak to other football fans and we may refer to what some football journalists have written. But ultimately at the end of the day, it's the exact same thing. You take what you like information wise, you listen to the people you trust and you form an opinion based off that. And that's what they've done. I think the evidence from Jason was when he said, I'd love to know what the contract offer is. So he's basically confirmed he has no idea what the contract yeah. offer is, or if there even is one. It's purely just two people's opinions. And Henry Winter was on Talk Sport, and he basically said the same thing, which is, I think you'll walk away, which is 
you know, madness given what he's achieved at West Ham and he's a fantastic manager or something something along those lines. And he thinks West Ham would be making a mistake of allowing David Moyes to walk away. Um, yeah, and I just, I listened to it all and I thought, is this it? Uh, I was expecting something juicier because I was sort of keeping an eye on the press conference ahead of the Wolves game, Frankie, because I thought, well, Moyes is definitely going to get asked about this. You know, it's come out that you're walking away and there was just nothing. So I thought, well, why is a journalist not asked him? Why are you walking mm. away a bit? Now, now I know. Uh, Mountain out of a molehill stuff, I think, really. No, I would agree, mate. I would totally agree. Um, look, contracts and all this stuff, and is David Moyes going to leave this, that and the other? I, I just don't think he's the sort of man to walk away. I think he's had loads of opportunities to walk away. Um, all this, you know, he feels underappreciated, and I just don't see it. I don't... With Karen Brady in his ear telling him every five minutes how incredible he is. Um, you know, the stories that we've heard that Brady really fought for Moyes to have more of a say than may have initially been agreed with Stiden coming in and stuff like that. Um, I, I think a lot of this noise Moyes is totally oblivious to. Um you know, I don't think we're really making that much noise in the stadium at the moment. Like I said, I don't think there's much booing going on. I think, you know, in past weeks, I think he's maybe, sw I mean, he swings things from one way to the other constantly, the man. Um, and one minute it seems to tip one way and then it tips the next. I, I just think he feels like he's doing his job. I feel like he's think he's doing a very, very good job at that. Um, I think he probably feels there is a bit of just the normal noise that you would have that, you know, people ain't always going to be on your side and that's it. I don't think he feels it's any think more than the ordinary. Well, you can't please everyone. Um, so yeah, I, I don't see him walking away as such. Um, the only reason he will walk away is if he isn't happy with the structure that the club are planning on putting together. If they do turn around and say, well, you're now you're signing the contract and we feel that Stiden is going to take control of X, Y and Z. And Moyes turns around and goes, well, no, that's not how I want things to be. Then that could be the reason why Moyes turns away. But again, I, I think he's got too many backers, too many supporters that are really, really strong allies of David Moyes um, in that club. And and I think they're sitting there and, and, and honestly just thinking, look, let's be honest, we've had it very, very good for a while now when we look back at where we'd come from with regards to that original Burnley game where people obviously got very upset to where we are now. Um, I, I just don't think anyone would, from the club side of perspective would want to risk that. So they are, I'm certainly not reading into anything. Um, I, I'm certainly not looking like it's Moyes is going to walk at the end of the end of the season. I'm not looking like, I think the club want him to go at the end of the season. So um, yeah, well, well, to be honest, mate, I didn't even really buy into the buzz. I kind of got myself into a headspace probably a couple of months ago where it was, um, Wow, my camera's moving, mate. Look at that. I must have done a hand gesture, which has made it start following me around. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, I, once we got to that stage where it was no, a decision won't be made until the end of the season. I really got myself in that headspace and have just turned off to any Moyes news. I understand why channels do it and Sky Sports are doing it because it draws a lot of attention and uh, you know news like that is is hot topic for whatever reason I don't know why I don't think we need it mate we've still got things we've got to focus on things we've got to do I, I, I still think this season there's loads more to come we've, we've got some massive games coming up we've got Europe to fight for again next season we're in the quarterfinals of a cup competition shut up that noise and let us get on with what we've got to do well, we're going to discuss that noise for another couple of minutes. I'm not finished having my say on the talk of day. <laughs> but before I get on to it, I want to point you in the direction of a big event that's happening on Thursday. There's technically two events in one space. Frankie will discuss the other one in just a second. Before we do, I want to go first and discuss the Hammers Chat aspect. On Thursday this week, we have our first ever Hammers Chat live so I'm already really nervous, but myself and Gonzo will be on a little stage, on a little platform in front of some Hammers Chat people doing a build-up show to the Barrier 
Leverkusen West Ham game. And then once we've shut up, once we've finished on the big screen, there will be the Bayer Leverkusen West Ham game for a watch along. So if you fancy joining us in that space upstairs, there's a downstairs bit. Frankie will tell you about that in a minute. But you want to join us in the upstairs bit, you can grab your ticket via the link in the description below. Tickets are £20. However, if you're a patron, please log in to Patreon because there's a code on there to give you discount. And the lead booker must be a patron in order to get that discount on all the tickets. Also, going forward, should we make it to the semi-finals and the final? Fingers crossed. Touch wood. Charlie reckons we will. Um, not well, Hammers Chat Charlie, the, Charlie. Charlie from Sky Sports. He reckons that we could win the Europa League and qualify for the Champions League. If you come to this event, you'll be guaranteed a ticket for that event. And also, you'll get a discount compared to people that don't attend this week's event. So... If you fancy coming to an event, but not the Hammers Chat bit, well, you can do that just as well, because you can go to the one that Frankie is hosting. Over to you, Frankie. Yeah, so, uh, as you say, two events in one. Um, but I wouldn't want people to feel like there's a separation yeah. of the space. They can enjoy any of the space that's available. Um, you know, we've got the massive screens downstairs. If people want to access those, they can. If they want, uh, you know, a bit more um, separation, then they can enjoy that upstairs for the Hammers Chat people. It will probably be a bit of easier access to the bars. But let's be honest, mate, we, we crammed that out for the final and the bars were very good at making sure people were fed and watered in good time. Um, mate, it's just going to be a really good evening again. I enjoyed the last ones. They were a lot of fun. Um, amazing food offerings I think people loved what food was on offer last time so people can get down doors are going to be open from five o'clock so the venue have just said we want to get open nice and early we want to get everybody in um, you know offer them really good food options um, get everyone in the in the mood we've got the DJ coming back same DJ we've had before who's gone down brilliantly um, at the last events and yeah mate I'm, I'm really really looking forward to it Hammers Chat Space Upstairs um, on the booking um site it doesn't make it totally obvious i think it, it may seem that it's the what's on there at the moment is only available to vip patreon hammers chat people but anybody who watches hammers chat and wants to go in the hammers chat space can buy those tickets and um, the only thing that patreon actually gets you over or above is that discount so it's the same ticket same space everyone will be together up there um but the patreons get the discount obviously because you know the, the support that they do and then um but if anyone else wants to go upstairs and join the hammers chat area then that's available to them um, obviously Gonzo Live there's just something about it that just sounds fantastic mate I don't know whether we need some rotten fruit to lob at him or whatever but I'm sure we can oh, no, make it nobody bring fruit to lob at Gonzo please <laughs> don't I, and he's quite short actually it's just a small target you probably won't hit him um, but he, he's a way to get exposed for his height with a lot of people he's, he's quite he's very small Gonzo very very small he's busy at pantomime time um, um, in December that's all, that's all I'm going to say I'm not going to say which panto he's involved in but he, he gets he gets booked up for theatre anyway right uh, David Moy stuff I agree with what Frankie said you know this unappreciated thing it's not from the fans because in order for Moyes to feel unappreciated from the fans and I'm aware that there's been a banner but that's happened on two occasions in the last 12 months I don't think that's much for Moyes to feel unappreciated you would have to listen Moyes would have to listen to what fans say and you'd have to tune into certain areas and stuff in order to get it and I don't believe he does that I think and also even if he did do that Moyes then has to care and I certainly don't think Moyes cares what fans think and I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do at the end of the day he's the football manager we're football fans he's paid to make decisions i almost don't want him making decisions based on what the terraces say who should be left back what do they what do the fans oh we think it should be Creswell. all right we'll go i don't want that to happen he's the football manager i think he could be a bit more softer and relatable to the fan base when it comes to discussing the football club as a whole or the history of west ham united or the achievements he's done i think sometimes it can be a bit harsh I, I think it can be sometimes be quite hard to like and to relate to but in terms of footballing opinion and decisions on the field i don't think he cares what we think so for him to feel unappreciated he would have to have a awareness and b care and i don't think he does either so it has to be within the club if this is to be true and the only thing that can be true is what frankie said which is the contract offer stipulates that Tim Stiden's going to have more of a say and he's going to have a lesser say in particular in regards to the transfer window and the spends. 
But when you look back at the January transfer window, we signed one player and it was his player in Calvin mm. Phillips. He was backed in the January transfer. Yes, we didn't sign him, but it was still a financially hefty loan fee and wage package that we put together to get Calvin Phillips for him. You go back to the summer, we all know James Ward Price was his number one target, but even if he didn't, Karen Brady has said that's the one player that David Moyes really wanted. And we went and got him. He's got big fans within the football club. Um, and I just struggle to believe he feels unappreciated. Maybe he thinks he should be, the club should be crawling over broken glass to give him a new deal already rather than wait and see at the end of the season. But I think the club have done the right thing, which is we'll decide at the end of the season. Because right now, we could, the best possibility is we win the Europa League and qualify for the Champions League next season. The next level down is we finish six or seven, things go in our favour and we qualify for the Europa League next season. We could qualify for the Conference League, but also we could finish in the bottom half. We could get knocked out in the quarterfinal and finish in the bottom half of the Premier League. There's such a significant difference between the best-case scenario and the worst-case scenario for the remainder of the season that I think it would be silly to decide now what happens with David Moyes. Wait and see what he achieves and then evaluate because ultimately there's no rush for the club. If they want Moyes to stay at the end of the season, I'm sure they can get him to sign a new contract. I don't think there's a whole host of clubs queuing up to give him to take him from West Ham. Um, and likewise, and Moyes wants to to leave, he can do. I think the right thing is just to wait. In terms of prediction, Frankie, do you what do you think is happening? Do you think the club have decided or do you think they are just waiting to see what happens? No, I think they just wait. I, I'm not sure it's even in their head that they need to wait or whatever. I just, at the moment, I think the club will be of the opinion that David Moyes will be given an offer at the end of the season. Yeah, I don't I even do think that. there is another flip on that. I think that's it. I think they're thinking we ain't got to rush it, but in their minds, it's going to be David Moyes signing a new contract. That's where yeah. it is. Yeah, I, I agree with that one. I agree completely. Right then, shall we turn our attention to Thursday? Not the event. Uh, we've done that bit. Links in the description below. But the match itself and then the tie itself. Because it's sort of two different things, isn't it? We've got 90 minutes on Thursday, but then we've got 180 minutes over two legs. How are you feeling ahead of this week? Yeah, I feel good, mate. I, I heard so much pessimism um, from channels over the last sort of... 48 hours of when sort of discussions about Thursday of but mate we're, we're, this is what we 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 want as football fans this is what it's about this is I, I can't ever uh, look it don't matter who we were playing if we was playing Real Madrid if I am excited mate I want to go toe to toe with these teams um you know I know they're unbeaten and everything else but it is a little bit different um I don't think their unbeaten run, and I know they've had Bayern Munich in there and everything else who, who are a decent team, and there's some other, you know, sensible teams in, in the German league. But, you know, I don't think it's anything different to when we had some fans saying, oh, well, you know, we've had that unbeaten run in Europe, but we it was the Conference League, and who have we really beaten? Who have they really beaten in, in Europe, really? Do you know what I mean? I know they're unbeaten, but I don't think they've come. They certainly haven't come across a David Moyes low block before. I think that's going to really surprise old uh, Alonso. Um, I, I just feel like we could really go and do a job on them, do a number on them. I do. Um, I'm always confident, mate. Uh, you know, we, we had a season where we sort of weren't particularly doing good in the Premier League, but we had really good results um, in Europe. I just think we've got some world, world-class players. It is a different kettle of fish this time. I think when you look at the squad, the value of their squad, you know, it's probably the first time we've come up against a team in Europe that their side's worth more than ours. Um, when we said about the co um, the Conference League, if you added every team's squad values together that we played on the way to the final, our squad was worth more than every single team. This time we got one team and their squad value is actually more than what ours is. So, you know, we're not playing a side who have just sort of, I don't think we're playing a side that have fluked their way to the position that they're in. I think they've bought really sensible players. They've progressed a few players who have come through their youth team that are absolutely fantastic. And I think they've, they're, you know, they've got weight behind them. I do believe that. I don't think it's just the case that they've, you know, cruised to this unbeaten run. But I do think that, you know, the Premier League standard is a very different kettle of fish, mate. I think we are um, a bit of a force to be reckoned with with the attackers that we've got. I know people are going to be, you know, ruin the, the 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 
fact that Alvarez isn't going to be, you know, lining up out there and people may have more confidence if he, he was in that starting lineup, mate. So I understand that. But if anyone can go to Leverkusen and dig us out something to bring back to the second leg. And I always said to you from the second that we drew them that I know we beat them at home. I know we beat them at home. I'm so confident that we beat them at home. So it's just digging out a result in that first leg. And I just think Moisey can do it, mate. I just really believe he can. I think they have come up against a few sides that play a similar little block like Moise. And they've struggled on a few occasions. They've got over the line. They've got the job done or they've drew the game because that still coincides with the unbeaten part of their, their season thus far. And I think they do tend to do worse against sides like that compared to the ones that may be expansive and go at them. And I think the, when you first said that Leverkusen have a, a squad worth more, my initial reaction was like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Then I thought about it. And I was thinking, well, actually, their centre-backs are 20, 30 million apiece. Wurtz is worth... Pfft, 110, apparently. I would say he's worth more than any of our players, I would think, on market mm, yeah. value. Paquette is 85 million. Kudus won't be fired off that, but I think Wurtz is worth more than that, actually. So they can then be Bonnie face up front and Schick in, in, in se- sort of second command as well. So can, it's, there's not much in it. And I actually almost find myself agreeing with you. Frimpong would probably be worth 60 to 80 million as well. So yeah. I, I agree with you, actually. I do think their squad value, market value, rather than what they paid for them, is probably worth more than ours, actually. And that's uh, a, a, probably an observation I hadn't really considered prior. Even if you go back to the Europa League two years ago, there wasn't many teams we came up against that had a greater mm-hmm. squad value than us, Frankfurt, Sevilla, Leon, maybe Leon with Paqueta and uh, Gamarez and there and Gusto at right back, but not because we weren't as good back then. Our squad value wasn't as high back then as yeah. it is, is today. Um, but yeah, uh, interesting. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Um, good result. You said we need a good result. What is that? Let me put this to you. Sevilla away, we lost 1-0, took it back and won it, albeit in extra time. Is a one-goal deficit good? Maybe it sounds a bit far, but is it an acceptable result? I don't think so. I think they're a different um, different side to the Seville side. Look at what the, the, where the Seville side have gone since we played them. They were on the decline, mate. They weren't the Seville of, of previous years. Um, they nearly got relegated that following season. I, I think Seville were probably there to be taken. I don't think this mob are. I think this mob are a live, very, very good team. And while I still think... I just think that that Premier League stature and that experience, obviously their average, you know, squad age is 25. Um, you know, I know some a lot of them are internationals and everything else. I'm not saying they're totally inexperienced, but we've kind of been through it a little bit now. You know, we've, we've seen a semi-final against the German side over two legs and we will learn a lot from that. And then we've gone through the Conference League and we've gone all the way and won it. I feel like that bit of experience and people like that final last year we had people who really stepped up who understood how that game needed to be played and people like emerson really really shone out and um i just think that bit of experience that we've got is going to put us in in really really good stead to be honest mate and i feel like that one nil loss that people think's all right i i I think if you come so that's back to our place, one nil down. I just don't see us overturning it. I just think they've got too much. I think we need to get a foothold on the game. If it's nil nil, then you've got a one off game. It's effectively, you know, that that's it. It's a, it's a, it's a one off game. Anybody can win it. I think we come through it because I think we beat them at home. Um, and then if we come back with it. I mean, the dream world will be a win. Um, some people will say that's not what we need because then we'll come back to our place and be too defensive and we'll try and hang on to what we've got from out there and that could actually play against us. I think the ideal result, mate, is a nil-nil. I just think a nil-nil would be brilliant. I think that would be just put it in perfect placement for us. I, I just worry that if we go in with that mindset of one nil, losing one nil is enough. I think if they get one, there's a real big risk that we fold and that would be my biggest worry um mm-hmm. we've seen it recently where we can go a goal down and then others quickly follow um so that i really don't want so yeah i want us to go in positive um but not overly attacking i think initially when we sort of 
when we drew them, I think there was this initial let's go and score more goals than they do attitude because we know we can score, they can score, we're without Alvarez, forget trying to defend because we're probably not going to keep a clean sheet, let's just go at them and attack will be the best thing that we can do. Um, I, I'm not totally sure that that's the right approach either, mate. I just want to see Moyes go out there, really be rugged, make it very, very difficult for us to break down, um, make sure those sort of wing backs or, or you know wide players don't get on top of us because we we all know our vulnerability that you know down the flanks in the last couple of games it's been very apparent so we need to stop that uh, and just make it really difficult if we can absolutely dig out a nil nil or a one one mate i i would be very very happy but one nil to me it's going to be a big ask to overcome i think west ham are we qualifying for the semi-finals absolutely mate Absolutely. We are going to Italy. We are going to Italy. It's in, it's there. It's, it's all, all made for it, mate. It's absolutely made for it. It's just, just so West Ham, isn't it? A guy comes there over there unbeaten. You know, we've had a few really iffy results. No one really expects us to. And West Ham go and get in their faces. Um, you know, that, that, that London stadium is going to be absolutely a light, mate, come um, the 18th so man, I'm just so excited I'm so looking forward to it I really am this first leg for me is what makes it though I just think this first leg is is kind of the critical one I think this is the one that we need to come through in a positive way and then that will just set up the perfect massive night back at our place so yeah really really looking forward to Thursday mate and seeing um, yeah what the where where the first leg is at the end of it yeah, and um, before we disappear, Frankie, you missed something when you were promoting your event. If people attend this event, the home lag. Yes, so we will be opening the fan factory uh, at the colour factory for the home leg. So that will be a, a really good way to sort of get into the build up. Um, it's going to be busy. You know the, the uh, you know what it's like over there on on the big nights. It gets really overrun. The fact that you can get over the other side into Hackneywick, don't have that bridge to cross over, and all the headaches of battling, slightly less security uh, queues on the other side. I just think it's a great option for people to, you know, have a, a big space where drinks are easily to get. We've got the indoors um, space if the weather's not great. We've got the outdoor space if the sun is shining on us, um, and we're going to have a deep. DJ there we're going to play some music and just get everyone in the mood it's going to be slightly different to our normal events beer hall vibe so lots of tables lots of seating come in be able to get your drinks sit down um, and enjoy the build up we're probably going to screen one of the um, conference league matches before the game as well so that'll be up on the screen probably the Fiorentina game people will be able to get food um, and yeah just really get in the spirit of a massive European night at home give people a different option and something, um, a different type of experience on a match day, which will be great. And anybody who purchases a ticket to the first leg will automatically be sent a free ticket to the access, the uh, the home leg event. So there you go. Um, if you come this Thursday, you can go to the Colour Factory the following Thursday as well for no additional cost. Tickets are via the link that's in the description below and the pinned comments of this video. We've made it easy for you to find a link. Uh, thank you to anybody who does grab one and come along, whether you come to the Hammers Chat a bit or you're staying downstairs in, um, with the three big screens down there. Get some food and drinks as well. It'll be a pleasure to meet as many of you. Myself and Frankie will be there. Gons will be there as well. So hopefully we'll see a few of you there on Thursday evening. However, if you've enjoyed this video, Please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up. Helps out the video. Helps our channel. Makes me very happy, as we'll see some of you there on Thursday. Subscribe to you to Hammers Chat, myself and Frankie. Well, we'll catch you on Thursday. But if not, we'll see you soon.